Okay, this is the big one of 2021. I'm here with Tim from Shimano and we're gonna be talking about the new Shimano Dura Ace. Uh, this stuff, I've been very excited to come out and try this stuff. Um, Tim's very excited to tell you all about it. Tim, let's crack on. Yep. New shifters. Yes. It's a new profile. Yep. What is the new profile hiding away? Well, it's hiding a wireless communications towards the drivetrain, but that's not all. It hides a lot of technology on braking and uh, much better ergonomics. Yep. Being able to control the brakes and the shifters from down in the drops on top of the hoods in, uh, in, with multiple positions. Uh, on, beside uh, the ergonomics, the brake lever ha gives a better control ratio using servo wave. Uh, technology which is a, uh, a different actuating ratio due to uh, a cam system, smart cam system, what we have on mountain bike and allows you better control of the brakes. Okay, so that servo wave technology, as pure roadies, while the gravel market and the mountain bike market might be familiar with that, as pure roadies might not be. So what does that mean down at the brake caliper? It means at the brake caliper that we were able to increase the pathway uh, clearance okay. between the rotor, but still having this, the same amount of power and control, not losing any, uh, as you would have with a more direct uh, lever style. Okay, so you mentioned that it's wireless what's what's happening from here to there um, from here from the cockpit a signal is sent towards the rear derailleur the rear derailleur is basically the heart or the hub of the entire system from there on it gets redistributed through the battery by a thin cable towards the front mech and this harmonizes every action of the entire shifting system okay so what's the thinking behind only putting a brain like the brain in the rear mech, why, why not have one in the front mech and have it kind of almost fully wireless with no cables here? Because um, a lot of the aspects that Shimano has, such as the auto trim, the synchronized shifting, is an action which needs interaction between the rear and the front mech. And that's why they need to talk to each other. If you do that in sequence, you lose time and it's not a seamless shifting. So by having it routed through the rear derailleur, this brain decides how each action will go, so every transition is uh, seamless. So I'm, I'm hearing from you that this might be faster as a shift system? It, it is, it is. And you would say normally a cable gives a faster signal than a wireless signal. That's true, the wireless signal is slightly uh, slower than a cable signal, but we make up for that by a better motor system in both the rear and front derailleur for a faster actual actuation. So the time between input and actual actuation has been reduced. And we were talking about the cables there. Those have got a little bit smaller, haven't they? Yeah, we are now using the same cables we introduced last year on our e-bike systems that uh, are uh, uh, a lot smaller, especially the plug area. And it's a big benefit for a road bike, as you know that many of modern frames that are aero have uh, also more uh, tire clearance. So the area in between the crank arm, uh, so the, the, the chain stay is very narrow and it's a, a nightmare normally to get the cables through, whether it's a shifting cable or it's a DR2 cable. And with these thinner cables, you can just slide them in and they will reach the bottom bracket without any issues or tools. Cool. So while we're down here, um, this bike and the one that I've been riding hasn't got um, the pro gearing. It's got a semi-compact 5236 kind of your bog standard there's also a 50 34 as there was before yeah. the racer gear though that has changed you've now got a 54 40 up front correct we have uh, updated that traditional 53 39 gear that has been there forever and um, out of demand of the pro racers peloton speeds have become much faster and they were asking us to keep up in those high speeds with the 54. it allows us also to have an even spacing and offering between 50 52 and 54. so at the back here there's also an 1134 cassette is that using the same rear mech yes so now we have one rear mech that can cover three different cassettes and in combination with all three different 
front combination. So the 34 works with the 54? Yes, so if you want to have a racer gear, because that was one of the demands as well. We've seen in racing that guys on hard stages in the Vuelta, they didn't want to redo their whole bike, the teams, when they had to go up uh, super, uh, especially the guys that were dropping and saving their legs for yep. the next stages. They wanted to be able to pedal with a high rotation. So, uh, and then they had to switch all the Riderellias to an Altegra long cage, for example, yep. which was undoable for. Yep. So pro riding has uh, taught us that this combination, a pro uh, front racing gear, but uh, possible to combine with a climbing gear really helps and it's one package. Awesome, and there were rumors of a new chain, but this is the chain from your mountain bike, there's nothing It is the regular there. chain from our mountain bike because we have also used the form and shape of our teeth uh, from HG, uh, the updated HG profile, the hyperglide shifting from mountain bike and brought it into road racing and it works with the same uh, chain from mountain bike that's already proven. Awesome. and. There's a little bit of hidden things in here that yeah. people are going to be quite worried about because people like me, I've got quite a few wheel sets yeah. kicking about the house. Am I going to be able to use those new wheel sets in this system? Yes, we learned the hard way when we changed from uh, 10 to 11 speed with the incompatibility. So I can confidently say that every HG type of hub body for ready for 11 speed will feed a 12 speed cassette. But you can't say buy these new 12 speed wheels and fit an 11 speed cassette to that? Not on the Durais level okay. because it has some extra technology inside in the free hub body. On other wheel systems we will bring that will be compatible but not on the specific on the but if you buy a 12 speed wheel set I think you also want to have the group. Cool that's fair enough. Um, Digging even deeper into that <laughs> rear hub, there's yeah. so much packed into that. Yes. You've got a new kind of ratchet system. Yes. Uh, using this new interface, uh, we could make an alloy hub body with a ratchet plate system. Ratchet plate has many different tooth on it. So every rotation, if you go from coasting to re-engagement, it is immediately connected. So there's no delay or no gap between normally with a pause system where you start pedaling again and you lose at least a few degrees of momentum. So people like me, I was absolutely praying for a completely silent free hub, but I know a lot of you guys out there love your noisy free hubs. This one has a little bit of noise, yeah. doesn't it? Because yeah. the, the, the ratchets never fully disengage. No. We try to minimize it as much as possible because it is extra friction when coasting. So the, it, we really reduce that coasting friction. A lot of people don't know that, that, that you lose energy actually from the noise and the ratchet disengaging when you're coasting. So it's minimized, but in order to make sure that it always re-engages, it's touching a, a, a very little. Okay, so from the back of the bike down there, right up to the top here, there are new sprinter shifters. And I have to say, I'm quite pleased about this because yeah. I can't say I was a fan of the second generation. I loved the first generation. And these have kind of gone a bit more back to that. Yeah, what we tried in the previous generation was to make a, 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 uni, a, a uniform switch that can be could double as a sprinter switch and a climb switch. Yeah. But because it had to be fully programmable, the size was slightly too big to make it a sprinter switch. Um, now we went back to the old style where, there's, where it's slave to the STI okay. and make it small again, but make it also a climbing switch that can be positioned with a clamp band with a round handlebar, with a, a smaller diameter clamp band down the drops for a sprint shift, but also, as you can see here, neatly integrated into modern cockpits. And as we'll be showing you with the Magic of B-Roll, these have become much more pointed, yeah. so the profile is much smaller. Yes. Um, going to be... You can hardly see them probably from... Yeah. Yeah. To be honest, it's going to be just a much easier tape wrapping job. Second little change is to the lever hood material. How have they changed? Well, uh, we've learned from previous generation that you need to open it up, on open, fold it open for bleeding procedures, but also sometimes to reach the adjust screws and it would... Um, uh, Just deform a little deform bit. Deform really, a little bit yeah. why it, it got loose. And so we changed the material, but we also changed the uh, contact uh, ridge here and the uh, contact points to be more stable. So one, once you fold it down, even after several times, it fits perfectly like new and it won't move. And so if the worst does happen, 
a DI2 system will go into crash mode. We've seen some pro riders, um, I'm thinking Casper Askreen, uh, one of the races, his system went into crash mode, he couldn't get it out. Mm -hmm and then he got caught by the peloton. Um, there have been changes to the crash mode though, makes it easier for riders just generally. Yeah, uh, I think the crash mode was a little bit too complex. The, the crash mode is basically a, a mechanical disengagement of the motor system. So if it gets overloaded, that it doesn't damage or break off the frame because that would even be a worse scenario. So if you crash and it does get disconnected, uh, the way to reconnect it was in the past to push that little button and it would shift up and down until it re-engaged and it was shifting again. Now you just have to shift down because the button is not anywhere near the cockpit anymore and uh, we don't want people to reach out to the rear the rear when riding. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so just shift down is the protocol now and it will re-engage. But I think what the misunderstanding was that the crash mode reset button would do a reset, yeah. which is not the case. It only uh, triggers a shifting action in order to re-engage the mechanical yeah. clutch. Okay, and yeah. so our final, final point, I've said that about three times, I reckon now, is that the actual button, because we've got no junction box up at the front, no. um, that's all moved down to the rear mech. Yeah. How are we doing um, the little micro adjustments to the, for the indexing? Every operation on that button is exactly the same. The sequence, the lights, the, uh, the warnings is exactly the same as you are used to on the normal junction okay. box. So, so that it's, same it's simply button, moved. It's simply yeah. moved. Okay, lovely. Well, with that, I have to say a massive thank you to Tim for talking us through it. Um, we've had a great time out here. Um, we are going to get this bike, well, not this bike. I can't fit this in my suitcase. <laughs> We're going to get a Dura-Ace group set out to the UK, test it for a bit more time, test out those brakes, you know, probably find some rainy weather because, you know, we couldn't find any here, thankfully. Um, and we'll see how the group set as a whole does, along with the new wheels um, and some other fun stuff as well. Check out the site for that review. We'll have a full video review on YouTube as well. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, they can see more from us by subscribing, it's great. Um, and if you want to get notified of those videos going up, you can click the bell icon. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.